coming up next. Talking point. Our guest today, Dr. Nicholas Ngu Santo, joins us from the United States of America. You're welcome. It's nice being here today again. Thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan, for always giving me the opportunity to come in time after time to weigh on the present political situation in our beloved country, Cameroon. Uh, it's a pleasure for me being here. Now, let us start with the problem of insecurity and violence in the major cities of the Republic of Cameroon, your home country. And this problem is seriously threatening the lives of city dwellers in Yaoundé, in Douala, in Bafusan, and other parts of the country. Yesterday, a group of violent young people attacked at least two neighborhoods here in Cameroon's economy capital, Douala, attacking persons, uh, wounding some of them before making away with their belongings and money. And this is a phenomenon that has been increasing, particularly here in the town of Douala. And this violence and insecurity has been growing in different parts of the country. What's your take on this? In understand the concerns about insecurity, especially in Yaoundé and Douala, uh, the Francophone cities, um, whereas the northwest and southwest regions of the country have also been in problem or crisis for the past five years. Uh, Mr. Babila Jonathan, you know um, uh, the northwest and southwest, as opposed to Yaoundé and Douala, are different parts of the same body it's all cameroon it's our country and you know as a consequence of having lived together for a long time the two sides are like one because there have been intermarriages there have been relationships there have been blood relationships that have developed that if one side is sick for so long a time the other parts to got to be affected because the illness is coming from the same place which is as a result of uh, governance governance because you know one make decisions to put bread on the table is the government policy and decisions with regards to economy with regards to education with regards to justice with regards to everything it comes back to government government if government is well structured if governance is well structured if the authorities in place are carrying out things so well in terms of decision making then i think you won't see insecurities you won't see young men taking bullets or taking guns and going to the cities of yaoundé and Douala. you won't see explosives on the streets you won't see uh, the boys of the northwest and southwest being in the bushes with guns because it all comes back to governance if we have to come back and restructure decision making uh, we have to sit on the table and try to revisit aspects of the constitution revisit aspects of uh, uh, the instruments the instruments that control us on a daily basis then you will see that um, all these uh, moral decadence crimes and wars will be avoided yesterday with uh, barista neighbor innocent uh, Kufo, Tony and councillor lloyd new york we're talking about the uh, possibility of a peace deal between the government of the republic of cameroon and secessionist uh, leaders and we're talking about the case of senegal that decided to negotiate with the casamans uh, separatist leaders in a new on a neutral ground in guinea bissau and they signed a peace deal the chadian transition authorities also negotiated with rebels out of the country in a, on a neutral ground in and they signed a peace deal and we're asking the question why not Cameroon you one of the people who initiated a, a peace conference in Ghana that will bring together that would have brought together both parties but it has never happened it didn't work tell us why many factors that led to uh, the Ghana peace conference uh, not being a success from uh, from the day one uh, the first issue is uh, the resistance by most of the uh, frontline separatists 
to not attend the Ghana Peace Conference because of insecurity. Most of them are scared of what happened in Nigeria with the Nera 10, with Seseko Julius Ayoktabe and the others who are currently in Kondenge prison. Uh, they will not want to come to the African soil. The only country which uh, in Africa, which even they said they could go there, is South Africa. And uh, uh, they have insisted that for any uh, negotiation or dialogue to take place uh, with them participating, uh, especially people like Chu Ayaba, Chris Anu, Samwe Ekomisako, uh, and others, uh, John Makoro, and the list is long, uh, such a meeting should take place in a neutral venue, and their places of choice is preferably Canada, uh, United States, States, Great Britain, or Switzerland. Uh, you must have heard about uh, uh, other than Ghana, there was the Swiss peace or Swiss mission that they were trying to come up also with. Uh, there were other missions like uh, the Canadian uh, CDN that took place uh, as a building foundation also leading to uh, proposals of dialogue and negotiation. So as to uh, make the Cameroon government not be saying that uh, they don't know who to dialogue with. So I believe that um, Ghana, Ghana a peace conference is a challenge because of insecurity and uh, i i mean some of us uh, uh bought into their idea because uh, nobody would like to negotiate or dialogue under the barrel of gun or uh, knowing that a country has a dictator that can sign any agreement to send them to yaoundé so that was one of the principal reasons that uh, the ghana peace conference uh experienced a little bit of backlash okay there was also uh, this issue of uh, the organization of the ghana peace conference you know most of our organizations that came in were to join the pan-african institute for development uh there was also the swiss peace that was coming in somehow uh, then uh, delegations were sent to yaoundé to solicit uh, sponsorship and other things and other companies like brasseries to cameroon guinness to see if they could sponsor or afford to help in the organization so in terms of resources uh the organizers were not really viable we were not really viable because we had the ipoa also uh, independent uh, people of amazonia we also had uh, the pan-african institute then we had uh, the the peace task force initiative and the peace patriots um, we could not have the available resources to pull all these stakeholders into Ghana, even if they accepted without having the necessary resources. So it's high time uh, we we declare honestly that the Ghana Peace Conference is uh, not going to take place. It's not going to take place. So we should be working towards other alternatives. We raise this point that's been coming up again and again on the side of uh, the government authorities who have been questioning with who to. Um, negotiate with who to discuss and this question has been coming up uh, because of the division the fractions um, existing on the side of the separatist leaders some who are in detention here in Cameroon some who are in the diaspora and uh, divided in one, on one point or the other what do you think about um, this issue of who to stand and talk on behalf of the secessionist leaders, on behalf of Anglophone Cameroonians on a negotiation table. As when it comes to the most important question of the day, which is what will take for peace to return to the country, is simple. It's simple. Um, for peace to return to the country, it means that uh, those warring parties have to sit on the table uh, without exclusion of anybody. Uh, you understand that uh, what happened with the Grand National Dialogue not having been a success is because of the absence of those who are fueling the conflict, the absence of those who are at the forefront of this conflict and primarily there are two persons here we are talking about those who are in jail and those who are in the diaspora who have fled the country and those who don't have amnesty to come back to the country. 
if this two camps are represented in any discussion then that discussion will must must come out with fruitful results and uh, I think uh, what the other camp has been proposing for close to six years now is let's sit down and talk in a neutral venue let's discuss what the crooks of the matter is without us having a barrel of gun on our head or our ears that's what they are talking about let's discuss in a free environment where you are not going to well, one of them not going to be under fear under duress of arrest this is what is coming from the camp that is fueling the conflict and then those in jail are also saying release us from prison so that we can sit on the table and talk that's the simple solution i don't think there are two other cosmetic solutions or other uh, solutions that uh, cannot resolve this issue other than this one yeah if we are being honest to ourselves we should know that uh there's misrepresentation yeah you know i mean you saw how the french and the british went to war you know because of no taxation without representation so if people want to say that they're going to be an end to this conflict is by bringing all these parties on the table to seek for an a lasting solution and it's easy in the form of state needs to be addressed yes uh, we know understand that uh, decentralization has been given and special status is given but the people say they don't want what is given they want to discuss and be a part of what is going to remain for a long time which means opinions have to be heard and voting has to take place and if possible amendments of resolutions that are going to make the new constitution of the land the new law of the land i mean we want something that will lead to a long lasting solution not a cosmetic solution because uh, if you see the main problem with the people is that they still continue to have colonial authorities on their soil they still continue to have gendarmes sdus a military that torture them on daily basis and if this military has to be withdrawn and the people re removed from jail and then we meet on a neutral venue to discuss and sign a long-lasting deal this will be the end to the problem and the authorities have been seen and the, the the latest was the senior division officer of the Meme division uh, that the soldiers the military the, the gendarmes and all the officers are in those two regions not to torture the people not to kill anybody not to destroy anything but to protect the population to protect the territorial integrity of the republic of cameroon and that they are professional they have been very very professional according to the authorities with the senior division officer of the MMA division uh, repeating this and he said it again recently when the military um, destroyed a locally uh, improvised explosive device planted in the town of uh, kumba but there have been contradictions so this um, coming from the ground coming from civil society right organizations with regards to some of the happenings some of the atrocities in those two regions attributed to the security uh, and defense forces now you elaborated on what is needed for the peace process to produce fruits concrete fruits on the ground but what about the division the factions that have erupted in the camp of the separatists which seems to be a stumbling block to the peace process who has spoken of government do you such statements because of the fragmentation or or the division that is amongst uh, the separatist leaders who are piloting the affairs of this conflict uh, you know i know that uh, they do not agree on most of the issues like uh, even last few days you must have observed that there was the ghost town that was announced by one camp and another camp said there was no ghost town so the contradictions coming uh, is like uh, we don't know really who is in control so what is going to happen now is that uh, uh, if the government indicate that they want to dialogue and they want to negotiate 
it's not a matter of inviting cam a or cam b it's a matter of inviting everybody and treating them on an equal basis without regarding anyone in particular to be superior over the other because what we know is that for sure the leader or the leadership of the conflict is in jail Seseko Ayuk, Julius Tabe, Fongalafo, and the others are the most principal persons, including Mancho BBC of the Coffin Revolution. These are the people who really uh, control the conflict on the ground, no matter being in jail. We know that. The rest outside here is just confusion. And let me tell you, the only important thing is that the various different factions have been able to uh, provide a basket Whereby Dr. Nicholas Santos, we're rounding up with uh, this very quickly. Uh, you one of the Cameroonians who have been recognized by the United States government with a number of um, achievements and awards. Tell us about this before we go very quickly. We're receiving the United States uh, President's Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, this award is given as a result of my volunteering and uh, professional expertise in the domain of mental health and psychological work in the United States of America, as well as leadership and humanitarian work. So uh, this is one of the greatest achievements, uh, award that has given for people who, are, who have realized uh, milestones of achievements within their uh, practice in the United States of America and um, as a mental health practitioner and as a psychologist or clinical psychologist which in Cameroon we refer to as psychiatrist I've been working with mentally ill people across the various states of the United States of America for close to seven years and uh, I've uh, had many awards uh, but this is the most important of it all uh, the first award was a scholarship that I had for about 1.3 million CFA, which is like $2,500 during my doctorate school. And then uh, I also had a, an award. Uh, that, that first award was called the Opportunity Scholarship Award. And then the second award was um, for treating uh, uh, critically mentally ill patients. And this is the National Alliance of Mentally Ill, the California National Alliance of Mentally Ill Certification and Award that was given to me in 2015. Then last year, which was 2021, I had... Uh, uh, the best clinical instructor honorary the honorary clinical instructor award which was the best clinical instructor for master's degree nurse practitioners in the field of psychotherapy and group counseling and that's from walden university 2021 and in 2022 i'm having uh, the united states president lifetime achievement award and that will be taking place next month at the national uh, uh, press of the national convention center uh, downtown in washington dc and uh, you know the the office of this as uh, issuing this award is in the white house and so um the east wing of the white house so um this will be in partnership with the black congressional caucus dr nicholas Ngu santo human rights and peace advocate thank you so much for joining us today that's it for today's edition of the 6 p.m newscast on the Kinos television goodbye